stand and face the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you always. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Honorio died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. O God, in whom sinners find mercy and the saints find joy, we pray to you for our brother Honorio, whose body we honor with Christian burial, that he may be delivered from the bonds of death. Admit him to the joyful company of your saints and raise him on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. 
the soul of the just are in the hands of God. And no torment shall touch them. They seem, in the view of the foolish, to be dead. And their passing away was thought an affliction. And they're going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For it before men, indeed they be punished. Yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed. Because God tried them and find them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them. And as sacrificial offering, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and they shall, and shall dart up about a spark through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over people and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, <laughs> and the faith shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Show. Sure. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring him, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Father, those whom you gave me are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I'm going to step out just for a second because I want to explain just a little bit briefly about the vestment that I'm wearing because it's a little different than what we normally see at funerals. Normally everybody sees white. First of all, Orlinda and your family and your friends, I am so sorry for your loss. Uh, Nori, is that was his nickname, right? 94, my goodness, that's, that's awesome. Um, so very, very much a full life as indicated by all the, the wonderful pictures on the table. Um, but I want you to know that we at St. Mark, not only today in this Mass, but always we'll continue to pray for him, for his soul, and for your family. So by way of explanation on a few things that we do in our liturgies here at St. Mark, first of all, we almost always um, use black vestments, and the reason uh, is the following. First of all, um, you notice that this vestment has black, but it has kind of a pattern in it, right? First of all, black, most of you, a lot of you are wearing black, why? Because it's a pretty instantaneous sign of why we're here. We're here in mourning, right? This is not a dinner party or a gala, that kind of thing, although people wear black at those things, but it, black is an indication of our mortality and the fact that we are here today mourning the loss of Nori. Um, but there are three colors that the Catholic Church allows to be worn for the funeral liturgy. The first one, as I said, that we're most used to is white. And white is perfectly fine and beautiful. It represents our baptismal garment, as well as the transfigured Christ, right? The dazzling white. And so you see it on the pall on the casket, for example. Again, this, this baptismal garment. But you can see also a cross of color 
which represents the garden because we're not, this is not our end, right? And you'll see something similar in this vestment. So first of all, as I said, you see black, but you see this, this print in the background and that print is flowers and leaves and plants. Again, it represents the Garden of Eden, although mortality means that that paradise is a little bit hidden, right? It's a little deformed. But then you have this centerpiece of fabric known as an orphrey, and you still see the black background because death is our reality. But it also now shows, as does the Paul, this, this more vibrant reality of the Garden of Eden, right? The restoration of that. But even all of this is not our end. This is our end, gold. Gold represents heaven. And so all of this is to say Adam and Eve sinned. We are suffering the consequences of that by way of uh, human mortality, illness, work being arduous and not just completely joyful uh, and all that. But all of that was undone, if you will, by Jesus, by that action. It's odd to say, but death is actually a gift from God. It's a blessing. Why? Well, think about it. If because of the sin of Adam and Eve, we were um, in suffering and illness and toil and all that, and oh, by the way, we still lived forever, that would be horrible, right? If we had to live in that life and still be immortal. So God said, you know, I can't, I can't let that stand. And so he did two things. Number one, he actually gave us the gift of mortality in the sense of saying that there is an end to this suffering. There's an end to the life on this earth. But also, he gave us his son. And so not only physical death um, is, is a gift but will be undone in our resurrection, but also our salvation. So the, the, the closing of the gates of heaven by the sin of Adam and Eve was undone by our Lord. So a couple things like that. The, finally, I just want to show you, there's, a, there's an emblem on the back of my vestment. It's called a motif. And that emblem is a symbol for Christ. And the reason that that's on the back and not on the front is because in a few moments when we do what's called the Eucharistic rite, you will notice that I celebrate the Mass, what's called ad orientum, right? To the east in Latin. Now, east is actually kind of that way, but it's liturgical east. And why do we do that? Well, because we believe that when Jesus comes again, at his second coming, he will come from the east. And so we are worshiping, not only we're worshiping God, but we're worshiping in anticipation for his second coming, right? And also then the priest is acting in the mass, is acting what's called in persona Christi, another Latin phrase. It means in the person of Christ. So in the Eucharistic rite portion of the mass, the priest acting in the person of Christ is now dialoguing with the Father, my dialogue in that part of the Mass is not with all y'all, as they say down south, right? It's not with you. It is Jesus communicating with the Father. And so this, this helps to represent the direction of that conversation and that dialogue. And finally, what this does is it says that the priest, again, acting in the person of Christ, is actually leading you to the heavenly liturgy. Right, which we're participating in. So just a, a few little notes of, uh, of, of uh, explanation at the parish. And then just a word about these beautiful readings. I, um, I have spoken about this a few times in my funeral homilies because I think uh, it's a really, really beautiful way to think of what God does to us and for us in this life. And by that I mean how he allows us to be purified, right? In other words, our suffering, our illness, our irritations, all of those things, all of our penances are for the purpose of our sanctification, right? God allows us to do that. It's so like, think about, you know, if you want to learn a foreign language or if you want to get in shape, or any of those kind of things. It takes some purification, it takes some effort, right? Whether it's to burn off fat, whether it's to open our minds to another language or whatever it is. So suffering has a purpose and Jesus made suffering useful by his death on the cross. And so therefore by our participating with him in all the sufferings of our lives, 
our suffering is actually co-redemptive with his suffering. So as part of that purification, we see in our first reading from the Book of Wisdom this beautiful line. It says, as gold in the furnace, he proved them. As gold in the furnace. So first of all, you start with the word gold. Gold is extremely valuable, right? You start with something that's magnificent and beautiful and valuable, but it has to be purified in the furnace in order to end up in its beautiful state. In its natural state, it's part of rock in the ground. And they mine it and they, all of that, right? So as gold in the furnace, he proved them. And that, again, is indicative of the way that God purifies us. The furnace, if you will, is our suffering in this life. And, oh, by the way, our mortal death. So I read this meditation quite a long time ago, and I've, again, I've said it a number of times because I think it's so beautiful. The way we can think of this purification uh, as it applies to us is there was a young couple um, who was in a jewelry store shopping, and this particular jewelry store was a place where the jeweler was a silversmith. In other words, he made the silver jewelry from scratch. So they were very fascinated at all this beautiful, intricate work, and they said, hey, you know, is there any way that you could show us how you do this? And he said, yeah, absolutely. So he called them back into his shop, and he showed him his little burner and the, the bowl and all of that. And he said, well, first you have to start with the silver ore, this stuff that's kind of chipped away, but you put it in this little cup, and you have the flame on it, and then you heat it up really hot, right? And so it starts to sort of burn and bubble and smoke and, and all the impurities get burned away. And then you end up with this pure silver that I then use to make the jewelry. And so they said, well, that's really fascinating. How do you know when all the impurities are burned away? And he said, actually, it's kind of simple. He said, I just keep looking into it. And as soon as I can see my image, I know that all the impurities are gone. That's exactly how God does it with us. God purifies our impurities. He takes them away by suffering and trial and all of those things. And he does that, including, by the way, in purgatory after this life, if necessary. He does that until he can see what? His image. Why? Because he made us in his image and likeness. So he needs to get rid of all those impurities until he sees his image in us and then we're pure, right? And then he's able to bring us home to the glory of heaven. So my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate, and I use that word intentionally, we celebrate not the life of our beloved, but celebrate God's love and mercy. His life was worth celebrating too, don't get me wrong. But this mass, this prayer, is specifically in order to celebrate the beauty and the, the mercy and the love of God, who even though he allowed us to have the consequences of Adam and Eve's sin, he could not let that stand. So he sent us his son. And we are gathered here today, of course, to mourn together, to support each other, to um, commiserate and to reminisce and all of those things. But the main reason we are here today is to offer our prayers and the prayers of the church by way of this Mass for the soul of this beloved. Because Honorio was a faithful Catholic, and I bring you also greetings from Father Will, who was blessed to give Honorio the sacrament of the anointing of the sick the day that he passed. And so that's a, a huge blessing for a priest to be able to do whether at the end of life like that or at another time of serious illness, for example. So today, my brothers and sisters, let us gather all of our prayers together and offer them for the soul of Honorio and that he will be at this very moment uh, with Jesus. And if he doesn't need those prayers, if the sacraments of the church were effective, which we know they are, and if he is no longer needing our prayers, they won't be wasted. Jesus will use them for somebody else who does need them. And so in this Mass and in these prayers, we, we hope and we pray that he is in the presence of Jesus at this very moment, and he's hearing these beautiful words, well done, 
good and faithful servant, welcome into the joy of the master's house. Please stand as we bring our prayers of petition to our Father. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Honorio received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The family and friends of Honorio seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. me 
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Set. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Honorio, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May we offer each other the sign of peace. May this, <coughs> excuse me, may this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life.
May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Catholics believe that Christ is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. Because of this, Holy Communion is open to practicing Catholics in a state of grace. If you are not Catholic or are not receiving communion, you may either remain seated or come forward with your hands across your chest like this. Please stand.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Honorio may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon Honorio in this life. For they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.
sincerely for allowing me and my parish to be a part of this with you. Um, I know that the family has an exception downstairs, so please feel free to run down. And again, we will continue to pray for you in the future, so thank you. God bless you. you very much you know for for everything your love support and friendship is is you know like is so important to us and it means so much to us we're so blessed to have you all in our lives i love you um so my little sister kathy who's not very little anymore wrote a poem for my dad and so i requested that she shares that with you today. So Kathy, and also if you want to share stories, if there's something you want to say, anything, if you want to talk about me, that's fine too. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, feel free to share, um, you know, and, and speak up. <laughs> All right, Kathy. Saying goodbye is never easy. The word should be see you later. It's a better choice of words. Daddy, you will forever be missed by those who are close to you, by those who admire, respect, and love you. Stories you share will be spoken of so that people will know the type of man you truly are. A man with courage, honor, love and a great father and a grandfather at that you've gained your wings steady fly high as high as you as your wings can take you take a bow and sit next to god see you later daddy <laughs> but I will be biased though. <laughs> um, Bev, what is usually uh, in our class, because she's my college uh, classmate, um, she's, we always go to their house. So I can see how daddy usually would prefer and go to her all the time. I remember one time where she, used, she always drives. She's the one who has a car in our group. So because she's small and little, she can't even look at the car and go past, <laughs> past it. So 
um, daddy will give her the cushion <laughs> to make her taller so she can drive in, take all her friends to every, every place that we want to go to. So that's all I remember. So she's the favorite. <laughs> and she, and we're all the favorite. <laughs> Close it, like this? Yeah. Okay. So not many people were privileged to have the childhood that Ethan and I had. We got to grow up and be surrounded with our Lola and Lolo. And it's the kind of thing that you take for granted. I didn't think this was going to be hard. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you, Lolo, for driving us around, for giving us nicknames. Yeah, you guys know me as Nachuka, but he, he also called me Chipmunk because we, I learned the new sound from one of my friends that week. Thank you, Lord.